and all who are sent is everybody. We're all told to go out into the world. We are ambassadors for Christ. So you should have heard but didn't hear. And you should have been led to Christ but no one extended their hand. And because of those things being absent, what should have been present, the enemy had full reign. Again I say, let us take into consideration that he had a head start. We were born into this world of sin. And we have to deny it to receive the new life. And in that new life is where you come into the knowledge and the understanding of what a wonderful, beautiful person you are. Your acceptance is only necessary from the creator, the one who made you and will remake you by giving you a new mind and transforming you from the inside out. Not necessarily physically transforming you. We're talking about spiritual transformation. Because it's a spiritual battle that is going on for you. And it is in this spiritual realm where you are losing now because you are battling by yourself. We must wage war with the power of God. You can't receive this power if you don't know that it's available for you. And you can't receive it even if you know it's available for you if you don't know how to use it once you receive it. We're here today to tell you that you don't get it all at one time. It's a continuous growing process. The gift for certain you do receive. But it's a continual walk of perfection for each and every one of us. Every day that we live. For we are warring against the enemy. We war in the flesh and we war in the spirit. And those who have been born again still suffer scars of battle. Everyone can proclaim like the Apostle Paul that the very things that I wish not to do, I find myself doing. And the knowledge that I have of the things I should do, I find myself not doing. But this is what I do. I take myself to this place. I say I'm going to forget those things that be behind me. I'm going to surrender my life over to God again. In accordance to the written word, we must renew our mind daily. We must constantly come before God. And that we must bring ourselves together with one another who are of like mind so that we can support and encourage each other. It is difficult, if not near impossible, to think that you're ugly and worthless if you're hanging around people who are telling you the contrary. You're wonderful. You're beautiful. You're talented. You can do it. God is with you. Hang in there. We'll help you. What do we need to do? Come go with us. Don't believe that lie. You know the truth. Look in the mirror. See how pretty you are. Look in the mirror. See how handsome you are. Look. We like you. We love you. What does it matter if they reject you? What does it matter if they don't care for you? You have us. But more importantly, we have God. That's what's 
important. So it helps you to overcome this thinking about yourself that you are worthless and that nobody really cares. God understands that we need to see things and hear things and feel things, smell things and taste things. All of this is a part of our human makeup. But he also knows we need to have a spiritual thing. We need to have a spiritual relationship with him because the war for this spirit is going on in the spirit realm. The enemy is doing his best to corrupt your mind even more day by day. No help from this source. This source wants you to go to the place that has been ordained for him. Hell. But plenty of help from God. Plenty of help. Beginning with reaffirming the greatness that you really are. God's affirmation is all you need to make it in this world. If others come and confirm it, that is good. But God is what you need. So come together and encourage one another by telling them the truth about the relationship of God and not being threatened by our society which wants you to Water down everything about God. God is not to be watered down. Neither is he to be censored. He is the creator. We are falling prey to the very words of scripture. Where those who dare to speak the truth have to think, am I going to be okay with these people if I tell them about God? Or will I be rejected? And if the enemy keeps you separated from the word of God, you are defenseless to win your battle for your own life. And no wonder that after the passing of time, most people pass through the valley of worthlessness. I'm worthless. I'm no good. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. I'm never going to make it. I never should have tried. I might as well give up now. And then change those statements too. Well, if I do this, I'll be accepted. And if I do that, I'll look a little better. If I take this smoke, I'll be accepted. If I give up my body, those girls will let me be in their company. If I have sex with this man, I'll be accepted as being a woman. If I commit this crime, then the guys, they will treat me like their brother. The enemy finds the opportunity to do his job. And we, the ambassadors of Christ, must do our job. We must tell the truth. We must upgird those who are weak. We must help strengthen those who have fallen down. We must speak words of encouragement to those, to those who feel distraught. And we must live a life before them that speaks of the glory of the God that is within us. Not some fake religious life that's all about jumping down and rolling on the floor and spit.
taking out the side of your mouth, running around and, 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 and coming out of your clothes for half an hour, 45 minutes, and then nobody knows what's going on or why. And then in the back room, the back rooms, all kinds of indecent sexual acts are going on on the very property and premises that are supposed to be dedicated to God by the very leaders who are standing up in, in front of you. So the real Christians need to stand up and be accounted for. Because the ones that are hurting are being beat down. They haven't heard. No. Yes. It has been read. But they haven't heard. The word of God tells us about having ears but unable to hear. And about having eyes and unable to see. We're mistaking for believing because they have been in a place somewhere. And the word of God has gone forth that they heard the enemy has prevented the hearing. And the enemy has prevented the seeing. And he has enlisted other human beings to encourage this state of being. There are multiplicity of distractions that go on. That's more about the flesh and socializing than it is about spiritualizing and praising God. Blocking the very movement of God at its point. We must not conclude that they have heard because they haven't. They need the love of God to continue pursuing them from those who believe. Just as the love of God continued to pursue us. And we must encourage them with his word which he says in so many places and so many ways how wonderful you are and how valuable you are. You might say before we get back to the scripture that God gave the world the biggest hope done. Jesus the Christ, his son. All humanity hangs on this whole diamond. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. There's none that compares. And it was exchanged for you. Exchanged for you. That's value. That's worth. But he didn't stop there. There's a greater promise for following after the hope, which is Jesus the Christ. There's a living promise that having received him, that you will have a more abundant life. And that God will go with you. And that now you no longer fight your battles on your own. And the revelation of truth is now available to you. Your eyes can now see. And your ears can now hear. And it should be hearing things like this. Even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea. I have made him. God has formed you perfectly. Oh man, woman, 
boy, girl, grasp this. The creator, the architect of the world that you live in, of this universe, of the very existence that we have, did not make a mistake with you. Concede not to the pressures of people, society, organizations, friends, family, spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends. God made you perfectly. He needs for you to hear this. Hear it today. Because today is your opportunity. No more giving up. No more negativity. No more foolish hopelessness either. For the price has truly been paid. And it was paid because you were created perfectly and wonderfully designed by God and he desires to keep you to himself. Cause you to come to understand how wonderful you truly are. Give your life away today. Give it away to Jesus. Repent from all of that archaic thinking. Refuse to let any blasphemous words come from your mouth. Release anything that you're holding that is contrary to the way you should be thinking about yourself. And reach out and wrap your arms around our loving Savior, Jesus Christ, who is receiving you with open arms because you are beautifully and wonderfully made and you're perfect for the job that he has for you and perfect for the life that he has made for you. Receive him now. Be transformed. Love yourself because God loves you. He made you and he wants you today right now to come to him. Amen.